Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. I hope you're having a good day. Today, probably for the first time, we have a 12 gauge slug made out of C63000 nickel bronze. These were sent to us by Chris Schumann of Schumann Motorworks. Now Chris understands that we are just big suckers for promoting small business. Chris's machine shop specializes in vintage Japanese motorcycle valve train components and the very tough alloy nickel bronze is what he makes the valve guides out of. If your old Japanese motorcycle needs a engine rebuild, hey go see Chris on Facebook and you can even find parts on eBay. He does not sell these 12 gauge slugs though. As a testament to his machining ability, he made these things exactly one ounce. And the idea is that he's just going to stuff these into the shot cup of a target shell. Now Chris took a very pragmatic approach to these, keeping them very simple and quick and easy to fabricate with the fewest possible tool changes. As a machinist myself, I can definitely appreciate that. Chris chucked up a piece of round stock, turned the entire length down to the proper diameter. They're a little rough, but they're just slugs, so it doesn't really matter. Using the same cutting tool, he then measured out and put chamfers or bevels between each slug. And he was probably able to make eight to 10 of these slugs without rechucking the round stock. He then changed over to a parting tool, which is just a very thin cutter, parted off each slug, and he was done. Very simple to make. As mentioned, these were intended to be dropped into a target shell, into the shot cup, which is going to be acting as a sabo. Chris also sent us some lead buckshot, three of these little spicy amita balls, just to add to the effectiveness of Chris's defense load. If you've ever wondered what Jeff, the cameraman, looked like behind the camera while lying in bed at night, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is nuts. Go ahead and figure out why. Who, who do you think you are, Grande Thumb? <laughs>
Oh, you're getting fancy now. Right, like equidistant. Big, big words there. <laughs> did, it, did the slug go through the vest? I went, I went to school and I ate crayons. It may have gone it through. It may have gone through unless that hole was already there. I don't know. And there's I don't another one. Right, there's another hole right here. Wow. Okay, that was one of the buck because it, it went, it missed the uh, Kevlar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's reveal what happened to the, the, our lung tissue. All right. This one survived. Oh, okay. You no take holes. that one home. Make some lemonade. This one survived. This one survived. Okay, get to the point. <laughs> You're gonna drive them crazy. All right, so this one's been destroyed, destroyed, survived. This one's been completely obliterated. <laughs> it's, it's completely juiced. So let's see what's, what's going on. That thing's gonna smell good though. And the slug did hit the vest, right? Right here. Okay. Yep, I hit directly, pretty much center. Are you sure? Oh. Unless this is where I hit. I think that's where you hit. <laughs> Yeah, that's where the lemon was. That's where the lemon was. All right. Okay. Don't get too cocky. I'm getting out. real cocky today, guys. Jeez. <laughs> okay, we're now at 10 yards. Let's see if he can refine his aim a little bit. Yeah, I'll do a little higher this time. Yeah, it shot a little low. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, sounds good. In test number one, the target was set at 12 yards. This time we have it at 10 yards. This time the slug is actually tumbling around, which is kind of what everyone expected the slug to do in the first place. Now I didn't rush Nick this time and his shot was a lot more on target. And because we we're at a closer distance, the spread of the three lead balls was a lot tighter in this shot. For a defensive style round like this, hey, this is perfect. That's all the accuracy and performance that you need. Well now I'll do a few tests at about 20 yards. This is way beyond defensive distance. Defensive distance is usually less than 10 yards away. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Here we go. The Mossberg 590 at 20 yards did okay. The slug was tumbling around, but he did score a torso hit with the slug and with one pellet. Here we go. We expected to see a lot better slug stability using the rifle choke, but that just wasn't the case. The slug was still tumbling, but Nick did score two hits with the buckshot. We'll now move Nick up to more of a proper defensive distance, less than 10 yards away. At this distance, with the single shot break action shotgun that we call Little Tony, everything hit center mass more or less. It wasn't super accurate though. With the slug and the buckshot, we were beginning to wonder if there was just too much going on. How far away were you on that one? It was about 10 yards. So okay. About the distance of like a, like a hallway in your house or, you know, from uh, any, any room. That's about the same distance. Okay, and where were you aiming? I was aiming right about here, right about the top of like where you should put your body armor, like right at the top of the, where your collarbones kind of meet, that little V, the little notch right there. I was aiming right about there and it, and it hit, it dropped like GameStop. It hit like, I don't know, at least four inches low and about an inch to the left. It was, our buckshot pattern dropped even a lot lower tighter. Than yeah, and it, it's, it's even lower, yeah. Which is, which is interesting. Yeah, don't understand um, what's going on there. And but. I think it looks like it might have tumbled again i don't know they're probably he, he said they're probably going to tumble which there's nothing to stabilize it's just a, yeah. a soup can cool well soup that's can ballistics there at, at, at close distance that's going to definitely uh yeah that'll, that'll work you know yeah so and it's just something you could drop in a uh, you know a federal target load shell right. you know that's the whole idea some simple fast simple, you fast, know, to, effective yeah it's almost accurate but you know, at this distance, um, you're going to be panicking, you're going to be freaking out. Hopefully, you take some classes and get training, and then, you know, you'll you'll be good to go at this distance for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, but overall, I would say these are, these are, uh, these pass the test. Yeah, they're better than, uh, than bird a, sharp, shot or a, sharp, bird. a sharp stick, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, I'd much rather have one of these than nothing at all. I'll tell you that right now. Absolutely. Yep. 
Okay, so these next ones are gonna be the same thing, just with no um, buckshot, just the, the slug by itself. We really wanted to see how the slug alone would perform, and also at a little bit lower velocity using the federal target loads. We almost forgot the lead plate. Good thing Lake Nick reminded me. <laughs> I think you hit it that time. I am direct center on that. Okay. This is the Benelli with the rifle choke. It really didn't give the slug very much spin at all. Very anemic. But it was still very stable in flight and the accuracy was much better this time. Probably the best accuracy we've seen in all the tests and that's without using any buckshot. We hit pretty much where I was aiming. So this, kind, this time I actually did. I bet the buckshot is screwing it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's. I think that's what's where our problem is. I, I think you're right, Jeff. Sometimes you gotta keep things simple. Right, no, that, that makes sense. And it looks like yeah. the pattern is right there. Yeah, it's just... That's it, that's how it hit. This time we're gonna try aiming right here and we'll see where on the head it lands. We're about same distance, about 15 yards, I would say. Yeah. A little low and a little left, kind of the, the pattern. It wasn't that bad though. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I was aiming right here, so about an inch and a half off. Um, went all the way through. The exit wound's very interesting, it's very small. You wouldn't even barely know it's there unless you actually saw the tract. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I think we can say that the, the buckshot was what was throwing the, uh, the slug off. I, I can agree, you know, yeah. we could blame you or the gun or this or that. And blame me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, he's proven himself, you know. Right. So it's it's definitely single projectile flying down the flying down the barrel is definitely gonna be more accurate than you know multiple hot dogs down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> in this shot, we had an even weaker spin. The slug is still very stable in flight and accurate enough. In this case, it's probably better to have one accurate projectile than have multiple somewhat accurate ones. Because if you're not hitting where you're aiming, what good is it? I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.